Hey, thanks for tuning in to episode of Listen, Listen to Larry, your host, Larry Bammer. Larry Bammer, One Row Mortgage. And there, <laughs> if I can. Until they refinance or Western work ethics. Yeah. Something that I like to do. You need my help. I, I made <laughs> Happy to be here. You. Like, oh my gosh. I have else. You. Yeah, for, for free. For free. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for uh, tuning in on this episode of Listen to Larry. And today I've got a great, great topic. So if you are a an owner of a home and you're thinking, I'm not going to sell it, I'm going to turn it into an, a rental, this is the podcast for you to listen to. Um, if you have a portfolio, a lot of people inherited uh, um, properties from their from their parents. Uh, you are going to want to listen. If you have rental properties that you are tired of getting those phone calls, you are going to want to listen. Um, and if you are uh, happen to be, well, I'll get into the homeowner association <laughs> part of it because that's <laughs> a, a new to me. I mean, um, I'm excited to have the powerhouse of all ladies. <laughs> Boutique Property Management from Orange County, California. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having thank us. You. Thank, you, oh, having thank us. you for having us. You're you're welcome. <laughs> um, I have a bunch of questions that I'm going to ask you, uh, but feel free to uh, share your your experience. I'll, I'll start with that. What is, and you've been doing this for a while. I'm not going to say decades because I don't want to date you, but um, <laughs> what what's your uh, experience in property management? And who are you? I guess we should start with that. <laughs> My name is Tawny Meredith, and I'm the broker <coughs> owner of Boutique Property Management Group. I started in real estate in 2002, and I went into property management randomly in 2010 in Orange County to now own my own company. Awesome. Yep. It was random. <laughs> yeah. But that's a long time. I mean, 2010 to now. So you've got uh, a lot of experience I do. Uh, how, how many? Uh, so in the um, in the the lingo for uh, real estate uh, is doors. Uh, um, uh, a door is one. One rental? door. Yes. Uh, um, it's not like the the home has four doors. It's so. A anyways, how many <laughs> doors do you uh, manage? Right now we have about 169, 170 doors. Yeah. And doors are, if it's a four unit, we would call them four doors. So we don't count properties. Yeah. That, that's, a lot of, uh, that's a lot of properties to manage. It is. Uh, but, but we have a dynamic team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, um, so a goal for 2024. Is How to, many doors do you uh, expect? If, if we're... If we're December of next year, how many doors is boutique property management going to have? I would like to have 450 doors by this time next year. Okay. So if you are a uh, landlord that out there, <laughs> if, you're, if you're a landlord out there in Orange <laughs> County <laughs> and you want to have a professional team manage it, we'll get into what you do. Um, you're going to want to listen in to the very end where you get the contact information, boutique property management, you can find them online. So um, what's what, your experience? You got into it, you fell into it. You said in, in 2010, um, were you working for a company back then? And then you came you yes. out on your own? Yes. So I moved to Orange County in 2010 from Northern California. And I happened to land a job at Irvine Property Management, not Irvine Company, oh, which everybody okay. thinks it is. <laughs> yeah, I, I, <laughs> um, a, a husband and wife owned it. And that's where I met Bridget. She was their first hire and I was their second hire. And with them, we grew the company and I stayed on for many years. I think I left four years ago. The company was sold maybe five or six years ago, I stayed two years with the new owners and then decided that it was time to get my broker's license and go on my own. Yeah. Um, that's an exciting thing to become. I mean, like, you have to be very uh, entrepreneurial to want to get your broker's license and then start your own, um, your own company. Um, how did you come up with the name boutique property management? I, I get the property management part. <laughs> 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 Not as dumb as I look. <laughs> because... 
we when we started out in property management we were giving it, it was a boutique style management company where we gave very good service mm. and we were we talked to each owner gave every every owner felt like they were our only owner as the new company had purchased the the company a new couple came in and purchased the company and when they did it became very corporate and so that was why I wanted to go on my own because there was no more feeling for the client it was all about the bottom line and the dollar and the Excel spreadsheet and so boutique to me was Hmm. to go back to the style that we came from to give somebody good service where you actually answer the phone and you're not having to push buttons and maybe maybe somebody calls you back in 48 hours yeah so okay. that was how I came up with the name. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I totally get that. It, it's the white glove service, the concierge service that you're providing. Yes. That um, I can't tell you how many times I've called a property management uh, for um, like a for HOA documents or something as a realtor. And I'm trying to reach who's the pro- like who's in charge of this this condo complex because there's an issue and you can never get it. you push a button you leave a message and they i mean like three days later they call you back or something that's it, right and it, we just started an hoa division that Susanna heads up <laughs> yes we did well I, i'm gonna get into that because i have questions about like what it is what you look for what's that ideal client and and right. the, the difference between th- there's some like bigger property management companies out there that quite frankly i don't, I don't think the the owners that are living at those complexes like dealing with either um so yeah i get that um what was the so you've known each other for a long time you you came up in the industry and property management over the last decade um and now you still work together that's awesome what's the 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 daily in and out like what what is um what is what's your role uh not only as the owner broker but like what is a property management look like property management look like well we are on call 24 hours a day Mm. it's not a monday through friday you get maintenance requests constantly you have to have a good vendor lineup so that you know that you can take care of people's requests timely especially if you know the heat goes out or air conditioning things like that backed up toilets Mm. uh we work remotely but we try to get together at least once a week and do a meeting and kind of go over things. We're, we're all talking daily pretty much throughout the day. (laughs) Um, it's, uh, we use software called that folio and we try to communicate through there because it keeps track of anything. If we ever have to go to court over anything and every single one of us can see what the other person's done, it's time stamped. And if we can guide the tenants to use that and the owners, then everything is kind of time stamped in there. But our daily, we don't have a daily schedule. I think that's probably the hardest part. And we're trying to, through coaching, get that a little bit more tightened up. Mm, Dialed in the systems. Exactly. But I don't think we'll ever have, like, an ideal 9 to 5 just because, you know, we always have to be on call for that emergency. Yeah, that's that's why they're hiring you is for those uh, unusual, like hopefully rare occasions, but as you get to 169 to 400 doors, it's probably a, a more often occurrence. <clears throat> but what I heard you say is you have systems in place and some pretty cool technology that records things. Uh, tenants can talk to you, landlords that you all are seeing what's going on to track um, to track the important stuff for for your clients. Um, you're not the you're not just sitting there, oh, I do property management, and, and like you're putting like to do tasks on post its and stuff. It sounds like you've you had a very good uh, a system in place. Um, to, to we do, I would have to say that 90% of the industry uses that folio though at this point. If they don't, they should, yeah. Right. Bridget actually came on board not using it. And how, how much easier has it made your life as a property manager? It's absolutely amazing because all the communication between the homeowner and I can communicate there. You can communicate with the tenants, uh, emails and text messages. And then also with maintenance requests, they are able to tell us everything, put photos in there, and then we just send it straight to the vendor. And then what's great about that is the vendor and the tenant can speak together. Oh, wow. They know each other's communication, their schedules. We don't have to be the middleman. Yeah. Um, it's, it coordinates in that manner. And then, of course, you do your leases in there, your lease renewals. 
Um, and then, of course, is I think she didn't touch all yet. Accounting. All the accounting is in there. A person can go on our website. They can apply there. And then we do the background check and the application process. And then as soon as the homeowner chooses that client, then you go straight into a tenant um, application piece. Everything stays in that portal at all times. So if, if I'm owning my first rental property, this is why boutique property management is so important because I get the A to Z technology, like the one stop to do everything. And I get you ladies who are gonna answer the phone Correct. Absolutely. All the time to, to problem solve it. So, Except for right now when we're talking to you. <laughs> yeah, well, Not right now. Thankfully, there's voicemail you'll get back to in 30 minutes. Um, exactly. <laughs> uh, as far as clientele, oh, um, what types of properties uh, do you manage or are you looking to manage and, um, and where? So we're, we're pretty much all over the place. I j me, myself personally, I just do Orange County. Okay. And I do a little bit of LA County up to Long Beach. I do have a few in Los Angeles that were referrals from other owners or tenants that have been referred. So we've taken those on, but we don't market out in Los Angeles just because it takes so long to get there if we have mm. to get out there. Um, and then Bridget is all the way out to Redlands. She has some in Temecula and <laughs> Menifee, Redlands. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. mind. So she's, Riverside. she would like to take some on in the Palm Springs area. Oh, okay. Because yes. she likes that area. Yeah, and who doesn't? We do single family, multi family, and now we do HOAs. <coughs> um, we're doing smaller HOAs right now just because a lot of people don't want them in mm -hmm. the industry. So we have kind of started that department and taking the classes and getting the certifications for that. So, so what I really hear you saying is like, uh, Long Beach area of Los Angeles through Orange County, all of Orange County, and then all the way out to Coachella Valley. So if, Pretty you, much. if you own a home, uh, if you've inherited a home or you own, you know, multifamily from here to Indio, keep in mind, this could be your, your saving <laughs> grace for not having to deal with the, the, the BS of, managing a prop I, I swear if i ever owned a rental property and i did not, not live walking distance to it i probably wouldn't want to deal with it and you don't want the tenants to know that you're the owner no. oh good point because they will <clears throat> we are we try to tell the owners if they know who you are if they don't get their way with us then they're going to go around us to talk, try to talk to you hmm. so you don't want the tenants to know who you are some owners don't really understand that, but it's because sometimes you say, I want to increase the rent and the tenant doesn't want you to, or you don't want to repair something that maybe is cosmetic yeah. that doesn't need to be repaired. So now they know who you are. They're going to knock on your door if you're walking distance and try to talk to you. So that's another point is trying to teach the owners certain things because it does make our job more difficult also if they know who the owner is and they can go behind our back. Yeah, and you're, you're a great buffer between the tenant and the landlord. Uh, it makes me think of another question. Um, how do you deal with that buffer? Um, and then also, um, obviously it's a CYA world we're living in, a litigious world we're living in. Um, what does that look like? What's your role um, in property management um, in that legal, civil uh, arena? We, we try to stay on top of all the, the new laws and regulations. We attend CAI. We attend the NARPM, which is National Association of Property Managers. Oh, wow. We do coaching through Tom Ferry. Uh, we read things that come over from NAR and CAR and try to stay within the apartment association so that we can know everything that's going on. It's very important to stay up in the legal market as well as on contracts when new contracts change and we have to make those changes as mm -hmm. well. Like, yeah. like the uh, rent control. Absolutely. Because <laughs> it's different. Rent control is different in every city and every county. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I heard a statistic recently and I was kind of, um, surprised by it, but not, not surprised of where we came from. And that's, um, 40% of the 
homeowners that have a mortgage right now. There's a lot that don't own the home free and clear. Uh, but 40% of the people that do have a mortgage, um, they have a mortgage rate below 4%. Wow. Um, Wow. Now, now, if you had a, if you got lucky and you refinanced or you bought and your VA or something and you got that two point seven five, you know, or or three to three and a half percent mortgage rate, there's probably a really good likely that those forty percent, they don't want to ever give that up, <clears throat> and um, they're going to hold on to that house. Right. Um, Absolutely, they might take the equity, maybe a HELOC or something, to to buy their next property. But um, I see on the horizon over the next year or a couple of years, a lot of people holding on to that first property that they got and turning, converting that into a rental and moving on to their, maybe their forever home or their move up their, their bigger home. Um, so what, what, for that person that's listening that is in that situation, what advice do you have for them? Um, I think that when you have that kind of history with that house, there's that emotional connection. Mm. And I think it's great that we can go in and we can communicate with them how we would take it from a residential home into an investment home, that we have their back. We're going to take care of that home as is our own, as it is on our business card. Yeah. And then we also can open their eyes to what can happen when it is a residential home that they love so much into an investment home. Not everyone knows they have to have a 10-year smoke alarm, the carbon monoxide alarms. Um, the water heater, the mm. HVAC filters and such. So we'll kind of just give them that sense of home that will take care of it like grandma or grandpa owned it. Yeah. And yeah. then also if we're going to help them with buying the next home because they took the equity, then obviously we do so. But we're there to have their back, keep all the pennies in the pocket and take care of it the best that we can for them and always have them in the loop if anything ne was needed, if they are that sensitive, that have that emotional connection to that long-term home and then move forward and let them know how you know we can take care of them. I, I hadn't even thought about the uh, emotional side of, you know, uh, this is the home I lived in and had my first kid or dog or whatever. I got married, you know, <clears throat> and, and then uh, that like hand holding that really probably it needs to be done. But honestly, some I, I, I can imagine some people just rolling in and being like, OK, here's the sign this form. Uh, we're going to get rid of this and we're going to change this out. And, uh, you know, here's the here's the lease listing agreement and that's it. And reality is is this is like you know you need to walk on on eggshells a little bit i did actually for one home that was in menifee the wife was so connected to this yeah. home and so she's done a couple of visits from texas from their for their phone mm -hmm. can i look at the can i look at the floral can i look at this absolutely just let me let them know because you know we have to give them a 24 48 hour notice before you can go in you know <clears> so we can check it out um she absolutely loved her front um a agava plant or oh, whatever uh -huh. I think it is and it was you know her favorite plant um and so Hidden Hills is beautiful in that area of Menifee it's, it's newly built it's just absolutely gorgeous and I understand why I mean it just is a beautiful home yeah and um so yeah I just thought don't worry you know I'll, I'll help you I'll help you and so yes there's you know you have some of those homeowners that have an emotional connection or some of them just say, okay take care of it we'll talk to you later and, and then they just give us carte blanche and those are really nice customers too <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, a, a, a tip for a person that's going to be um, turning their their primary residence next year into their first rental property a tip well it's best to have a property manager because we typically rent them for more than they would get. Mm. So people don't like to pay the management fee, but if you look at the statistics, we do get more money typically than if they were just to rent, try to rent them themselves. We also do the screening process. A lot of owners, like Bridget was talking about, if they're emotionally attached, they think they don't have to do work, or maybe they painted a property crazy colors and trying to tell them, like, oh, it looks beautiful, because it does, but mm -hmm. it's better to just go with, like, something that is a more common color, like, let's go white or tan and keep it very mellow, because people like that when they're renting, because you're dealing with a bunch of different personalities, right, yeah. at this point. <clears throat> um, I think that's the hardest part. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm a homeowner, and I'm, um, I just bought my next house, so I'm, I'm moving out, my home's now vacant, I, I was smart enough to call you and hire you to take care of all the headache. 
um, and you show up and you find out that I've taken the, uh, I don't say all the appliances. I took the refrigerator, the washer, dryer, um, and the shower curtain. Uh, um, I don't know. Sometimes I see like, I'm, I'm amazed at how many times, like sometimes the shower curtain's gone. Like my, my last place I, I had rented after we sold our house, I had to run to Target and get a shower curtain. But anyways, uh, my own problems. Um, I think I'd want my own, my new shower curtain. Yeah. I wouldn't yeah. want yeah. somebody else's right. for sure. <laughs> um, I'm curious. If I'm, that la- if I'm that landlord, that homeowner, do I make more money if I go out and I get a fridge and I get a washer and dryer and I rent my home out like with those appliances in place? It depends. Is that your it depends advice? on where the property is located hmm. and what the property is. So if you're, I'm going to say if it's a single family property, yep. you don't necessarily need to leave the washer and dryer. It's just something else that you need to take care of, right? So we typically write them in the lease that they're without warranty, but if they're there, the tenant still even though it's in the lease they think that it is within warranty and they get upset when it's not covered if you have a condo and you're dealing with a little bit lower price range i would say yes it's good to leave it and put that as part of it right and sometimes if you have a certain layout and they have to bring something up the stairs and you don't want them to damage your stairs or damage something then it's good to leave it because you know that it was taken up there properly and left that, that's but, a good so idea it just think, depends like uh, yeah a lot of uh homes i mean my, my my last home the garage hookups it was older 60s home in laguna hills it, the hookups were in the garage but a lot of these newer these newer homes have laundry upstairs and you're right i didn't even think about it if i take it and now the tenant has to roll in here they might ruin the they walls they might ding the walls and what yeah or so the floor leaving them um it, but so just so you know you wouldn't move out and then we come Typically, if you've hired us, we would come out prior. So it, it. that's kind of the second. We talk to you on the phone. We'll send a contract for you to review. We typically will give you comps, but we can't really comp your house until we come in and walk it, right? So then the next step, if you live in state or in the country, would be to come to the property, meet you. If you don't live there, we would still go to the property, walk the property. We take photos, make an inspection, and then we would give you that advice. Like, oh, I think for this property, you should leave it. And this is why and so you're already we have an owner's manual too that we send out but you you already are pretty much prepared and along the way we help you and if you were living in the property the last two months Mm -hmm. we'll usually ask you can we put it on the market so it's leased when you move out ah that way you save that 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 30 30 days is really that makes a difference over the 12 months of what what you're netting it does yeah for sure so we'll usually try to show it the last and with the tenants we show them the last 30 days they live in the property got it so 60 days if it's because obviously you're not going to bother me as much it's my house we set up appointments we have that all (laughs) set up even with the tenants so we don't want to pester you or the tenants or anyone else so typically what we'll try to do is get if we can get everybody in if we're priced right and we can get 10 or 15 parties in at let's say 10 o'clock on saturday (laughs) we'll line everybody up and back to back back to back and we'll show it all at once you know you said something that really um uh it was interesting so Realtors, you know, seller calls the realtor and says, how much do you think my home is worth? You know, what's, what do you think? And what does the realtor always say? Well, I need to go there and see it. Exactly. Like I, I, (laughs) like that, that makes sense. Um, I think most people hopefully understand if you're going to sell your house, you know, a realtor is going to give you a, this is the low end, this is the high end, or you're shooting for the stars, or I haven't sold a home in a year and I want your listing, so I'm gonna say it's worth you know 10% more <clears throat> to just get a contract. But, but that's a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, right, but it happens, it, it happens, you know. I think the, 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 the agents that aren't doing a lot of business, they're gonna, they're gonna take, you know, they'll, they'll agree with your aspirational pricing and, versus um, logical comps and you, you know you're hiring the right person if they're honest. If they're saying, uh-huh. I can't give you a range, really. And I can give you, like, uh, on MLS, but honestly, wouldn't you rather know, like, let me go in person as a professional, walk your property, 
and then give you and and it, when yeah. you said that i was like wow here's the difference between <laughs> like hiring you know joe schmo property management you know that does it on the side yes hustle to you like oh, thank you no i, I i'm gonna <laughs> hire like I, I have to come and walk your property and then i'll tell you what your property will will lease for yes right. we send comps yeah. But we always are very honest on the phone. Like, we'll send you the comps. This is what things are going for in your neighborhood. But we can't give you the number until we come and look at yeah. it. The number that's right. going on the yeah. least listing contract is what I need to see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, with that comparable market analysis, which we call CMAs. Yeah. And we give it to the homeowner for their review before we get there. And if they're really, really, you know, but I really want 4000 And we're kind of looking at uh, maybe thirty five. We'll let the market speak to us. Yeah. We'll let you know how it goes about 14 days. Yeah. And if we have any showing appointments, then that will communicate to us. But if we don't get any showing appointments or have any phone calls on it, the market's communicating and let's go ahead and go back to our report that we gave you. And then let's go ahead and go from there. But the, you do have some of those homeowners that are just, no, I know I can get this. Mm -hmm. Well, you obviously want to be hired by this, this client. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll kind of just smooth it over and we'll, okay. I'll put it on the market, and then in two weeks, let's discuss this again. Uh, and then that kind of kind of helps them see that we had your best interest in heart. Yes. We kind of lost 14 days, but hey, you know. You're, I always tell people the same. Like, let's just start where your heart is at because you know you own a home. If if you have a number in your head and they, they've they seen other stuff, you say, let's just start there. Let's yeah. Because if that's your number and I'm giving you 35 and you're saying 3850, let's start at 3850 because then, like Bridget said, if – if the market will dictate. So if we're not getting calls within two weekends, then we're overpriced and we're gonna have another conversation. But I let them know that ahead of time so they I'm not going in there like you're saying and saying, this is what we're going to get and I'm gonna be the superstar when I already know in the back of my head that yeah. I'll lose the management if I'm doing that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give them two weeks. And that's why you're saying, if, if there's a tenant in there, like hire us, bring us on 30 days out. So mm -hmm. that first two weeks is, is not, Wasted. 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 Mm -hmm. It's like, we'll try your pricing. If your pricing didn't work, we're going to day 13, we're coming back to the reality. Mm -hmm. um, but I, what, what I'm, I'm curious about is, so the ones that are, um, I, I thought I was going to do it on my own. You, you mentioned hiring property management, professional, professional marketing uh, um, can get more. <clears throat> what is it that you're doing um, if you're looking at a comp and the comp... Uh, you know, down the street, same model, maybe a, a couple nuances different, um, sold for, sold, um, leased for $5,000 a month, and your client wants, you know, more than that. That's 5150 or 52. Like, what, what, what are you doing? What's the advice you're giving? What's the strategy you're giving to, to get them more monthly? So, I don't, we didn't really mean that portion of it. So an owner typically will go on Zillow. Mm -hmm. You, you have experience with Zillow, right? Zillowrealtor.com. I, how many people do you have come to you? Like, I saw that on Zillow. Well, shoot, that's been gone for two weeks already, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Like it's, they're getting better at updating, but that's been gone for two weeks or that's unrealistic because yeah, it's been sitting on the market, but it's not leased. Yeah. So the, I think what I was trying to say at that moment is we have, the technology and the skill and the knowledge because this is what we do all day long we're not out selling properties we're out leasing properties to kind of eye something and say well this is what we think it's going to go for mm -hmm. we also have the technology to market it in several other places where an owner does not have that mm. capability capability right so you pay us a few hundred bucks a month but yet you're not dealing with the tenant you're not dealing with the screen you're not doing the lease renewals you're not doing the walkthroughs you're not taking the midnight calls yeah. Is that not worth three hundred dollars a month? And then we probably got you one hundred fifty more than what you would have gotten if you tried to lease it yourself and <coughs> leased it faster. <coughs> yeah. So it <coughs> might have sat on the market sixty days. Now you've lost six thousand dollars instead of you know. So we try to break it down that way too. Yeah. Like if you have a vacancy for two weeks, this is the breakdown of what you're losing. Let's lower the price a hundred dollars. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. And touching on that part, is to say, oh gosh, is that much money per month? I love to go in there and say, okay, well, divide that price by 30 days. That's how much you, I make a day to work for you all day uh -huh. long. So can you go to Starbucks and get a 
grande vente, whatever you call that. Yeah. And a, and Loco you know, frappa, a lot of yeah, exactly with non-fat cream or whatever, and then maybe a croissant too. Can you get that per day, all day long? No. So you're probably cheaper I tried, than that. Cheaper, mm, yes. Yeah. yeah. So I try to <laughs> not, yeah, kind of smooth it over because sometimes they feel, oh, it's that much money, but it's really not that much. Why don't you just look at it divided by thirty? <laughs> I'm not trying to say that I'm not worth it, you know, because mm. I think I'm worth it, but I just want them to see that it's not that much of a sticker shock if they really pay attention to the hours in which we put in for them. The value. The well, value. I, I, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you, this might be one of those added values besides the, the tracking and professionalism. Um, Landlord-tenant conflict resolution. What, what, what does that look like? It's not arm wrestling it's, on the kitchen dealing, counter. You're dealing with different personalities. Chat GBT is like our very best friend. Very best friend. <laughs> oh. it, it's, it's our very best friend because you, uh, Tom said it in one of the conferences, you may be angry and you're going to sit on a minute, put it through Chat GBT, and then they say it perfectly. They rewrite it the perfectly. right way. The yeah. right way. Re rewrite and it we, for me sternly but with compassion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or we, we go meet them in person, let them know, you know, we're we're real people too and we're in all reality we're just the middleman, right? So if an owner does not allow us to do something, we are not allowed to do it because it's not our home. And sometimes tenants don't understand that. So if it's really bad, then you just go meet them in the person, talk to them, let them know like, Hey, I'm a real person too. And I'm here trying to help you, but I can only do the best that I can. Mm. Um, we're, we're trying to weed out actually now that we've gotten a little bit busier, some of the owners that are not willing to do stuff because it's just not really worth our time. Yeah. Yeah. And we luckily let's knock on wood. Um, we don't have that many, terrible tenants because we don't have very many bad owners that don't want to do stuff. Bridget just had a, a rough one, but we, we got through it and we had a little bit of help from the owner was amazing. And we had some help from an attorney, a local attorney. So he helped us say what we needed to say. And, mm. and yeah, you, you just, you learn every day, <laughs> every day. I, I, mean, I hear attorney and that brings me up to the next, the next question. Um, that deadbeat tenant that's not paying how, how, um, how do you deal with a, a, a tenant that's not paying um, or like you know months in the arrears we don't have months in the arrears oh <laughs> no. well, there you have it <laughs> no, you if you're a landlord if you own a property and you want that money <laughs> all the time we so yeah. you're you run a report after the five days and we serve notices for the most part people pay them I would have to say in, in my 13 14 years I've only I've been to eviction court maybe eight times in my 13 14 years I would have to say six of the eight times that I've been to eviction court those were inherited properties mm. the owners came on board for us to help them evict the tenants because they were bad oh, tenants and they okay. came on board so that's an inherited tenant yeah. so they weren't people we placed um, and then you haven't how many times have you been playing? I think, well, I think four uh, five or six yeah and some inherited and all of them are inherited yeah. i didn't i didn't evict one that i put in my place no so what we do when we do have that is we serve the proper notice if they don't pay then what i usually do is negotiating in property management is the same as in sales i try to negotiate with the tenant for the most part in orange county most of our tenants have good credit mm. so you or i don't want to ruin our credit if something comes up right um, and anything can happen. Someone could get sick, car accident, lose their job. So typically I'll call them and just say, hey, what's going on? Something's going on that you're paying the rent late. That's the human side of you. Right. Uh, like, it's, it's yeah, a negotiation, yeah. right? And, and learning over the years. So if I can get that tenant to, you, you still serve the notice because you want to have the owner's fiduciary, right? Yeah. But you, I get on the phone, call them, what's going on? They typically will tell me whatever it is that's going on. And mm -hmm. I say, okay, well... What do you think is going to happen? If it was just something simple and they got two weeks behind, I'll call the owner back and say, look, they've been a good tenant. They lived here five years. I did this with another guy. That he's he's lived here a long time. He lost his job. Now he has a new job. Let's do a payment plan. Let's see what he can figure out. Nice. He pays extra per month. And so that guy actually paid his payment plan was good. Or I'll ask them, when can you be out? 
can mm. can you just give me the keys and be out if not this weekend but next weekend yeah and then Quick. i have them sign a thing that way we can just get the property re-rented we don't have to <coughs> evict you so you don't have to have an eviction on your credit ah, we don't come yeah. after you the owner will just forgive what you owe and let's all move on right yep. from here so for the most part like you or i we have good credit and we're like oh my gosh this happened let's just put stuff in storage and get out mm -hmm. and we don't have to owe him any money and move so i've done that if that doesn't work then it gets turned over to steve silverstein who's the number oh, one man that eviction is, attorney in around. orange yeah. county and he hasn't lost a case for me yet <laughs> and so he it runs about 800 it used to be 775 like 800 850 dollars if they don't dispute it and then if they do then you show up to court with him he basically rips them whatever and then you get them out i, you I think i had a uh, a client of mine years ago that um converted a home that they bought and they owned to a rental and that was um, who they used yeah of course Absolutely. he's the best he's the best yeah. he's the best of the best but, uh, no, no surprise the best property management <laughs> he out actually there used to be our uses, old boss's neighbor <laughs> uses yeah. the best uh, attorney um <laughs> I know you use the system, the platform, uh, um, to manage and track tenants coming in and saying, "I have a problem with the water heater, garbage disposal." You probably, you probably heard the garbage disposal not working, or toilets, oh, yeah. toilet and garbage disposal. Is that the <laughs> yes. most common? Mm -hmm. Both, yeah. Bathtubs. Yeah. Tubs. <laughs> yeah. Okay, bath water bathtub heaters. not leaking. Yeah. yeah. Um, how do you handle these repairs? Not software, but how do you handle these repairs um, in, in a cost-effective manner? Well, we have vendors that we've worked with for years and we don't own a maintenance company, which is a huge thing that, that new property management companies are doing. They own maintenance companies, they hire vendors and then they upcharge. Double dip. They double dip. Hmm. We don't do that. <laughs> um, we, so we, all the vendors that we work with, we've worked with for years for the most part. We can trust them to call the tenant. They know the system. We know their pricing is good. We know they do a good job and we don't do callbacks. Um, like uh, we use a guy named Steve for plumbing. We've used him for years and years, but for water heaters, I don't use him. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> but um, we use Water Heater Warehouse because they are one third the price. Oh. He, they buy water heaters in bulk and they get the water heaters cheaper. And he's a really good guy too. And we just know that he's cheaper and it saves our owner money. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so Steve, but Steve's on call. He's the one on our emergency line. If something comes up, and he also knows to call the tenants if they can turn the water off and wait till tomorrow so it's not an emergency call and cost the owner more money because mm. it's an emergency. Or if it's something that can <laughs> kind of be fixed and make it to Monday, then we'll do that so they're not paying a triple fee over Saturday and Sunday. So we try our best to you know keep costs at a minimum because our job is for the owners to make money, not spend money. But we also want to make sure that their property stays in good shape, mm -hmm. especially if they're out of the country or out of the state, and that they do their deferred maintenance and the property stays worth money. So 10 years from now, they're not showing up and it needs a ton of work and it's going to cost them a bunch yeah. of money. So, absolutely. Where, where's, where's the furthest that um, a, a landlord um, resides? Um, I have not Australia. Here in the States. Australia? I have Japan. Japan. I have, I have Japan, yeah. and I have some. Yeah, I have a lot out of the country. I have Japan. Australia is probably the furthest that I have. Huh. Yeah, and we pay their for some of the owners. We pay their taxes, and their I pay a couple owners mortgages. So, okay. Yeah. So really hands off. So if you if you own a property <laughs> yeah. and you out of the country, <laughs> um, property taxes. Uh, I'll be uh, HOA. I would guess maybe too mm -hmm. uh, if they were in yep. that. Yeah. Yep. We pay all, we pay a lot of HOAs, <clears throat> even owners that live here, just because another thing to point out, I suppose, is if everything runs through us, mm -hmm. then at the end of the year, you get a 1099 from us for the rent collected, but you also get one statement that uh -huh. shows your accountant everything that's been brought in oh. and spent on the property. And then your CPA loves you because yes, that's so much easier to deal with. Management fees are a tax write-off <laughs> oh. for an owner. They're a tax write-off. So. So if you're complaining about the cost, the couple hundred dollars, the Starbucks a day, right. exactly. uh, to, to have that hands-free, the, the stress-free, hands-free managing your property, think about the, call your CPA first before you say no. <laughs> exactly. Because if you're, you, you can potentially write off uh, that, um, and that deduction could be huge. That's that's a net yes. to the property. 
yes, it helps. Ah. So I, I have some owners, like one of my owners, he has the trees cut because he likes to pay the gardener up front. Mm -hmm. So then he bills me and I pay the owner back just so it stays on the all in one yeah. accounting. So he gets one accounting thing. Um, I, I've been very impressed at talking to you ladies so far. Uh, uh, and not only just your knowledge, and that comes from the volume of business and the experience that you have, but you mentioned a few different uh, uh, acronyms, uh, NARPA or I, something. NARPA. NARPA. <laughs> um, what type of uh, continuing education or uh, associations, cert cert certificates mm -hmm. is there for property management? That if you have, and, and someone's looking at hiring you versus, yeah, you uh, got the master. You know, the Joe Blow. What's, where, what's really great about the association when you become a realtor, they have the classes that you can take. So for instance, both of us. I, I've never taken them. So okay. I'd be a perfect example of don't hire me for property management because <laughs> I don't have a clue. So what's uh, wonderful about our association that we're part of, they also offer classes and you can go on their calendar and sign up. And so both of us are property management masters mm. and it takes some time and a handful of classes. Working but, on mine. And she's working <laughs> on hers. And then also every three and a half years, we have to do the classes that Suzanne is doing right now. We are recertified. And then what's also awesome with what she was saying with CAI, which is California Association Institute, or NARPM, National Association of Realtors of Property Management, they offer classes for us to do continuing educations and certifications that we can add um, to our initials, like, you know, the doctor does PhD. Yep. Um, not PhD for us, but, you know, <laughs> I could be a PhD of property management one of these days. It sounds we'll just like see. it. One of these days. Yeah. No, I'm teasing. Uh, but I think it's really awesome they do that for us. But then they also can send us um, letters or emails and says, hey, we have this new class coming up. And then we go and we sign up. Not all the time do we have to pay a fee. We, all, we can also do the Zoom class. So I think that being part of the association, being a realtor of that association, that also is something beneficial to us because then we can see what kind of classes they can offer. And um, it just behooves the homeowner to know that, you know, that's what we do for you. Yeah. The Property Management Master California Association of Realtors offers that as well. So I got mine through there. And then NARPM offers all kinds of courses. So like currently I just signed up for a property management accounting class. So it keeps you up to date on the accounting because that's actually probably the most difficult part hmm. of doing it. <laughs> um, favorite, uh, favorite story um, in, in managing property. Favorite story. Yeah. Or you mean the good, the bad, and the ugly? Yeah. Or? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, yeah. I have the best the ugly drama. one. I have the best ugly one, I, in my opinion. Well, be careful. Sure. I have to be careful. <laughs> but I want the best. It's a but hypothetical. The it's a hypothetical. But, but it's a hypothetical okay, yeah. that I <laughs> help the homeowner, though. Okay. This is, I, I feel, in my opinion. I went there with my homeowner. With my, uh, my homeowner gave me a call and said that the downstairs had a concern and mm. had some sense and stuff, whatever. So the handyman and I went, oh, yeah, they had a fried chicken party. I mean, it was full on. <laughs> fried chicken smell you can barely go up to the land and you can smell it and i was like holy moly yes they did huh. um so unfortunately for this homeowner there was a mess but we went in we cleaned it up we rolled the carpet up like a burrito and get it all cleaned up my homeowner for my handyman got done 24 48 hours and it was all nice and clean again so you know you just never know when you have neighbors that tell you what's going on with your tenant upstairs uh, and make nice with the neighbors make nice with the neighbors and everybody has your business card um, my best, I think my funnest part is one of the houses I have in Newport. Um, just the, a lovely couple that live there and invite you over for, you know, I can't say the word very well, charcuterie board and glass of mm. wine and just say, you know, thank you for everything. They give you a box of chocolate and say happy new year and yeah. you have great relationships and they've been there, I don't know, five and a half years. So I think that you make the camaraderie with your homeowners and your tenants and that's how you're treated. That's me. The best and the worst, yeah. the good, bad, and ugly. Gosh, I don't even know over the years that you just forget about so much of it. I, I think the good part, like Bridget said, is the owners that appreciate you and the relationships that you build. And just, I truly appreciate the owners that know that we have their back mm -hmm. and that we're doing the right thing and they trust us. It's the, the ugly for me is the owners that have distrust. Maybe they had a bad experience with somebody else or, 
or what have you, and they think that we're just like out to get them, I, I take it personal to a yeah. sense because that's just not my personality. So I would say the good for me is the relationships I build with the owners and the tenants. A lot of the, we have a lot of really good tenants, and the uh, the ugly is the bad tenants and the owners that distrust. Mm. <laughs> For me, I guess it would be, um, as Tawny mentioned, the owners, the that relationship that you have with them, and then the tenants on some of the properties because of HOA, not all properties are occupied by the owners. Some do have renters in there. Um, the bad part of that is then you have a renter battling with an owner within the same association. So then mm. there's the back and forth. Oh, you did it. No, you did it. No, it was over here. No, it was over there. So that's the bad part. But the good part is of coming in to, um, you know, clean it up, get it together, get them all happy and be able to live amongst each other because they're not going to go anywhere. The renters are going to be there. The owners for sure are staying there because they own that property. Some of them would like it to not have renters in there, but, you know, some owners, you know, want to use it as their investment instead of, you know, their first live-in home. Yeah. Um, so, Susanna, what's what's this uh, HOA division? <laughs> <clears throat> HOA division. So, this is Homeowners Association. So, this is basically a community, a community that has come together and says we want it to stay all the same uniform throughout. Mm. Um, the biggest one we have right now is 28, um, and the smallest is a fourplex. And we range from uh, Laguna Beach all the way out to Signal Hill and Anaheim, Santa Ana, hopefully getting a couple more that are in the works. Are these uh, like 28 unit multifamily or is this 28 it's, single it's family homes? Condo, for the most part, they're condos or like apartment oh, okay. setups. Uh -huh. um, and like I said, a lot of them are owner occupied. Some of them do have renters in there and some of them, they have it in their <clears throat> stipulations of their CCNRs that they are not going to have any renters on their property because they don't want to deal with any issues that may arise with having a renter because as a renter, some of them feel, well, I don't have to abide by the association rules because this is what my contract is with my homeowner. And then sometimes we have to deal with a separate property management because they have somebody else managing mm -hmm. their home for that particular place. Um, it's interesting on, on many different levels because each one has its own quirks and what they have on the property. But we stay up to date with our fire extinguishers, elevator permits, if there is any on site, and you know, walk the properties. I was walking properties this morning, had to go down to Laguna Beach, and then I was here in Newport. Yesterday I was in Long Beach in Anaheim. So as a HOA property manager, you walk the property to make sure things are taken care of. You know, trash cans aren't left outside, you know, where you're not having to write up notices. And with that, you know, some of them feel that they don't have to pay their dues because there is a due that they pay to the association, which takes care of managing mm -hmm. the association. Managing maintenance. Like, maintenance, yeah. the, you know, gardener, the plumbing for outside or painting if they have something that they want to do later on. Um, so it's that part, too, on making sure that that gets taken care of. And if not, then we have to do the legal action and start with the notices and say, okay, well, this is where we're at. And there is repercussion for owners that don't pay their HOA dues because how is it that, you know, 10 people pay, but two don't. Yeah. And you get to live there and, you know, reap get the rewards. Wow. And we didn't mention that Susanna is bilingual. Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> she speaks <laughs> perfect Spanish. <laughs> really? Yes. And a notary. And a notary. Oh, yes, that too. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thank you. This has been so informing, uh, informative for me, um, not only just being a, a property owner, but uh, being a realtor. So if you're a realtor and you, and you watch our show, you like me, I mean, I have 20 years in the business. I, I, I have learned so much about that side of the industry today. So thank you. Um, one parting comment takeaway. So it, for the, for the, for that person who owns that home, who next year is going to be renting it for the first time, um, one piece of advice for them. Give us a call and we'll help you out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> if I can add to what you just said as a real estate agent, was something that I like to do um, for the agents out there that have investment properties with their clients, mm. but they don't want to do the property management, but they don't want to lose that farm. I have a handful of agents that I am their preferred vendor for property management, and I go behind them when they go ahead and take care of that investment homeowner. I lease it, I take care of it. Once that homeowner says they're not uh, wanting to be a landlord anymore, I clean it up, it gets all taken care of, all you have to do is stage it and sell it. And I have that in my portfolio as a preferred vendor for agents out there. So I want to plug uh, that just real yes. quick, because you said you're an agent. I'm like, hey, wait a minute. I actually want to reiterate that, yes. because we've talked that. about that. Yeah. yeah um, you're giving it back. So if Absolutely. you're an agent out there and you're like, well, I don't want to give it to property management because if, if and when someday that, that landlord owner decides to sell it, I'm not going to be in the circle anymore. And that's not your philosophy. No, no, no. no your name, your number, your number, your diary number, everything is on my PMA. <laughs> I just yeah. did one with an agent who I used to, I did some transaction coordinating back in the day and she gave me the property. It was hers. And I knew that from the beginning and I just gave it back to her and I've worked with her actually throughout the deal. Yeah. She sold it and I've done the maintenance and held some money back so that I could pay for it while she had some <laughs> things done to get it sold. And she just called me and said she has a cash buyer and asked how much money was left in there because she needed to help get a couple things done. So yes, we always give it back yeah. to the agent. Well, that's not an industry standard. That no, is your not. standard. That so is our right. standard. Uh, I want to re reiterate no. that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, listen, I I'm sure it's been invaluable for you, whether you're a realtor and you've learned a lot like I have today, or um, you're going to be that first time investor and you're realizing, you know what? I do not want to deal with this headache. I want to uh, bring them on and hire them. So how do we get a hold of you? You can go to our website, it's boutiquepropertymanagement.net, or give us a call on our cell phones. So I would say start on the website, and all of our numbers are there. Thank you for having us. Oh, thank you thank for you. having thank us. You. Thanks for coming thank on. You. All right, stay tuned for our next episode. See you in a week. If you're looking to buy or sell real estate, this is the podcast that you want to listen to. My name is Larry Bammer with One Real Mortgage, and I have great professionals here to interview to educate you on what's going on in the market.